Don't know what inspired me to make this video, but here we are. You know how bullet journal people have this word of the year thing where they'll start a fresh new journal for the year and write a word that they want to manifest this year? Yeah, mine would have to be inspiration because it's been about a year and we're still in lockdown. And I know you should get into the habit of creating whether you feel inspired or not, but let's face it, our art is almost always better when we create it from an inspired mindset, because we're all just sims with full autonomy on. But if, like me, you've exhausted all your usual sources of inspiration, here are 5 new avenues that you never even considered and I guarantee they will work because you never even thought to look for inspiration in all of these places. So, as always, if you enjoyed this video and find it helpful, then please do remember to give it a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below because guess what? My sources of inspiration never run dry and there is definitely way more where this came from. All right, here are five unusual ways to find inspiration for your art. I'm not quite sure why, but after about 10 whole years of painting, I find that my usual sources of inspiration just don't work anymore. Is it because I've thoroughly been through every single image on Pinterest and Google and scrolled down to posts from three years ago on Instagram? Maybe. But the good news is, this means I've had nearly 10 years to get creative with where I find my inspo and you get to have all of my discoveries instantly right here, right now. Lucky you! And I can promise you none of these tricks require you to buy anything you don't already have. You can literally just do this on your computer if you want. Also, in the background, you'll watch me paint Sagittarius, which we'll talk about more later in the video. Alright, let's dive in. Pinterest is everyone's tried and tested place to look for inspiration, or as I like to call it, pinspiration. Okay, I'm sorry, please don't unsubscribe. <laughs> However, there are a couple of main issues that I have with using Pinterest specifically for inspiration. Number one, the content can be quite hit or miss. Pinterest basically runs off user activity and because there isn't a limit on how many things you can pin, a lot of people, myself included, pin anything and everything that even mildly interests them. And while that's great for when you're bored and want to try some light DIY, it also means that the high volume of mediocre slash irrelevant pins tend to dilute the really good inspirational stuff that you need when you're putting together a vision board. Second, the search function is chronological. While this is amazing for content creators, as a consumer of that search function, it means that you'll often get the same old search results no matter how many times you refresh the page. For instance, Loish, right? I love Loish, love her work, love her style, love her personality. You know I love Loish, I did a whole video on her. But if I have to see this no, painting God, in a Pinterest no, search no. one more time, swear to God, I'm gonna lose my mind. Safe to say, it irks me to look at Pinterest too many times. Instead, here's a way better alternative. Artstation. Hear me out. Artstation is a portfolio site. This means that the artists are directly uploading their work on there, but not just any work, they're directly uploading the best of their work. So you're gonna have way higher quality of inspirational images by default. And the search function on ArtStation allows you to sort and filter a little more effectively, meaning you're not stuck with having to go through a million results to find the one good one that fits your project brief. Plus, I can tell you as someone who occasionally posts on ArtStation, a like and a follow on there means a lot more to me as an artist than if someone were to pin my art to their board, which I have no way of being notified about. But that's just a side note. The point is, running a search on ArtStation is going to give you way better results than Pinterest or even Google, because ArtStation is curated by the original artist not by the general public who use Pinterest as a bookmark machine, myself included, by the way. You don't even want to know how many knitting patterns I have on there. I don't even knit. 
So <laughs> skip Pinterest, try ArtStation, promise you the quality and quantity of your sources of inspo will be way higher by default. I know you have a movie that you rewatch all the time. Don't even lie to me right now, I know you rewatch the cheesiest of rom coms, I do too. I'm not just talking about the movies you love, because we all have movies where the plot really stuck with us for years and years. Nah, I'm talking about the movies that you specifically rewatch. You see, there is a reason why, despite already knowing the entire plot and all of the lines by heart, you still enjoy watching that particular movie over and over again. Because while the plot may be old and worn, what keeps you coming back is the visual appeal. If there are certain scenes in the movie that you could watch a million times on loop, look for the visual cues that affect you so deeply. Is it the character and their appearance? Is it the scene and lighting? Maybe the direction and camera work? It can also help to reverse storyboard, which is actually a technique I saw on Tumblr. Yes, I was a Tumblr fangirl, no, I'm not ashamed of it. But <laughs> reverse storyboarding is when you take a screen grab of a scene that you really love and put that down into a sketch. If nothing else, the very motion of putting pencil to paper will get your creative juices flowing. But you could totally also do character sheets or other studies from the movie, or simply just make a list of cool little details that you can inject into your own work. The point is to recognize why you feel drawn to watch a film over and over again, despite knowing what happens in the plot. For me, this is either the Lord of the Rings trilogy or Mean Girls. There is no in-between. The two are such contrasting aesthetics, but there is so much I love about the visuals in both of these franchises. So tip number two, rewatch your all-time favorite movies that you could watch a million times. No, no, not an actual graveyard. Can you imagine if I just left you with the title and no explanation? Susan would have my head. Why are you running? Why are you running? No, I mean your painting graveyard. All those half-finished projects that you abandoned, all of the random sketches in your old sketchbooks, go back to all of that old art. This is a goldmine of inspiration, especially if you have what I like to call blank canvas syndrome. It's when staring at a blank canvas or white sheet of paper instantly causes your brain to feel overwhelmed and shut off because it doesn't know where to start. And over time, I've realized that that is the biggest function that inspiration actually fulfills. It is to help you out of the blank canvas syndrome by giving you a starting point. But nowhere in any book does it say that you can't use your past work as a starting point. And the best part about this particular source of inspiration is that the more you continue to draw and paint, the more it grows and expands. While you've been spending years looking on Pinterest, you've sketched and discarded so many of these scraps, which are now your brand new personalized Pinterest board. I know what you're thinking, there was probably a reason that none of these sketches made it into the final paintings, but as Albert Einstein once said, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. Who you were as an artist back when you created those scraps is not who you are today. Chances are, your new and improved skill just might be able to breathe new life into your painting graveyard. So go forth, little necromancer, go revive those scraps. You want to know what my favorite cartoons were as a kid? The Jetsons and the Flintstones. And yeah, there is that conspiracy theory that says they both occurred in the same post-apocalyptic timeline, and yes, I believe it 100%. But the reason I loved these shows was because they were creative and innovative. Because back in the 60s, when both of these shows were created, they had neither the technology nor the more advanced paleontology to accurately figure out what the past or the future would have looked like. So they used their imagination, and that to me is the most powerful thing ever. 
Sure, reality shows are great, but the old cartoons that imagine the future, now that is what my future children will watch. Because as human beings, the very ability to create something that doesn't exist yet is what has caused us to advance to this level of society. And the fact that there were cartoonists back in the early 1960s that were animating flying saucers and dinosaur plumbing, now that is creativity. So I honestly highly encourage you to check out vintage cartoons and films that predicted what the future might look like. I'm talking crazy fictional stuff like Doctor Who, Space Jam, Men in Black, the really old Star Trek movies, and all of the most outrageous sci-fi. Do not go for one of the newer ones like Interstellar or The Martian. Those are amazing movies, but they're too close to reality. The point of this exercise is to really push the boundaries of what we think is possible. As we grow up and get into certain routines, we tend to lose touch with that part of us that can imagine these crazy scenarios. We're taught to avoid flights of fancy and focus instead on maths and economics. So by going back and watching these silly, lighthearted fantasies, you're essentially jumpstarting that part of your imagination that has been forced into staying dormant for entirely too long. See? Didn't think of that one, did you? Okay, this one is quick and dirty, but it is the most efficient way that I found that gets rid of blank canvas syndrome once and for all. Step one, go to Unsplash or DeviantArt or your own old paintings, wherever, grab a random image. It really doesn't matter what the picture is of, just that the colors and lighting are somewhat attractive to you. Next, import that into Photoshop or ArtRage or Critter or whatever painting software you have. Now here's where the fun begins. Grab the smear tool, or even liquify would work here if you use Photoshop, and go nuts. Smear everything around. Smoosh together light and dark pixels, stretch around all of the different colors, nudge these pixels around in whatever order, or no order at all, until you start to find a composition or silhouette or character base or landscape or scene emerge from the depths of your canvas. And that's literally it. That's your starting point, aka your inspiration. I can't tell you how many times this has saved me from blank canvas syndrome or just blank brain syndrome in general. Try it, I promise you, you'll never run out of inspiration ever again. But at the end of the day, always remember that inspiration is a fleeting thing that comes and goes as it pleases. Your job as a creator is to create regardless of whether a grand idea strikes you. Inspiration should be a cool add-on to your work, not the very foundation of it. So here is Sagittarius. It is a mutable fire sign, which means one of its core principles is flexibility and the ability to transform and morph into whatever it wants to be. As with all fire signs, Sagittarius is deeply passionate and ambitious. It is ruled by Jupiter, which is the planet of knowledge and expansion. As such, Sagittarius is known for its adventurous nature, its love of growth and expansion, and just a much wider, globally motivated outlook on life. However, when it goes dark side, Sagittarius can be flighty and easily bored, restless, impulsive and impatient, and shallow and non-committal. It tends to find a quick escape should the first sign of stagnation show up. Sagittarian energy, to me, is definitely flight, not fight. And I can say that, because guess what? I'm a Sagittarius rising. Your rising sign or your ascendant is said to be how you pursue your passions and how you deal with issues. And boy, let me tell you, that is exactly how I deal with mine. I too instinctively avoid issues instead of facing them and would rather literally move to a different place and cut off contact with everyone than actually talk about my feelings. Yeah, I know, it's a personal growth journey. In Greek mythology, Sagittarius is usually attributed to the centaur Chiron, a wise medicine man and teacher to many Greek heroes, including Hercules and Achilles. One day, he was accidentally hit by a poisoned arrow shot by his own disciple, Hercules. 
However, because he was immortal, he couldn't really die, but rather had to live in constant agony. And despite being the greatest healer of all, he couldn't heal his own wound, which gives him the title of the Wounded Healer. However, when he heard that the titan Prometheus stood trial for giving the gift of fire to mankind as a compromise, Chiron offered his own immortality in exchange for Prometheus's freedom. Impressed by his kindness, Zeus immortalized him as the constellation of Sagittarius. Then again, there is a debating opinion that he was instead immortalized as the constellation of Centaurus. The goddess Artemis is also deeply associated with the sign of Sagittarius because she is the goddess of the hunt and Sagittarius is usually depicted holding a bow and arrow pointed at the star Antares, also known as the heart of the scorpion. In ancient Egypt, Sagittarius season was considered to be the harbinger of war, because that was around when armies started to create war plans and strategies on how to invade and conquer more lands. Native American history, however, sees Sagittarius season as a time of family and togetherness. This is around when autumn begins to turn into winter and the ancient natives would take this time to light fires and sit around with their families and tribes and tell their children historical stories that were passed down from generation to generation. Now that is a lot of lore and trades, but I've tried my very best to capture all of it here. I mainly based this painting off of Chiron with the centaur and some of the archer characteristics from Artemis, but this is definitely a story piece of its own. Here you see a little more of the Sagittarian shadow trait of fickleness, where he's used his amazing archery skill to shoot an arrow at the moon and is using the attached rope to take flight and swing far, far away from the erupting volcano in the background. Essentially, he's chosen to escape the situation completely and avoid any discomfort rather than sticking around and helping the mortals on Earth cope with the aftermath of the disaster. I've also made it so that the arrow is pointing directly at him, just as a little easter egg there with the story of Chiron. And full disclosure, the volcano was a total accident, it was definitely not in my initial sketch, but that's kind of what I love about these paintings though, is that they generally take up a life of their own. And that, to me, is honestly the most inspiring part of it all. So you see, there are about a million different places to look for inspiration, but always remember inspiration will really only get you started. It's actually resilience and good habits that actually get you to the end of a project. But with that said, however, I do hope this video at least gave you one or two starting points for your next project. And if it has helped, then please remember to give me a big thumbs up and comment below. Hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss a future upload on this channel. And if you're looking for more intensive anatomy-based pure art tutorials, then make sure you become a channel member by hitting the join button below. Or come check out my Patreon and grab all of the exclusive content exactly when it comes out. And also, if you're bored and need art critique or just want to chat, come join the Discord. A brand new seven day link is in the video description. But with all of that said, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Check out some more videos up here and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye!